Special history here in Monaco, the women's steeplechase, the uh, world record set here not too long ago. Yes, the person who set it is in this race, Beatrice Chakoic, three years ago, 8.44.32. Well, she's not in that sort of form at the moment, but lots of uh, other women on the world all-time list, including Kiang, although she's just outside minutes, 9 minutes point zero one, her personal best goes back to 2016, but in that really good form again. Emma Coburn, Yavi, Krauser, all in the... Actually, there's five of the world's top 11 of all time, all in this race. There you see those names, and they're going to go out pretty hard. 2.59, they've been uh, asked for. Emma Coburn, the world champion in 17, silver medal in 2019. A little of an Olympic medal to add to that. Uh, Winfred Yavi, Still just 21, but did just child, uh, I nearly said childhood, almost was, you know, she changed allegiance when she was just 15. Prodigious childhood? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prodigious young talent, but yes. And, uh, she produced, well, she's only had a couple of races uh, so far this year, but we think she's in good form, as indeed is Lizzie Bird of the, of Great Britain, best over 1500, and the steeplechase this year, Lizzie Bird, based in Colorado, in Boulder, same as Emma Coburn. Uh, altitude for most of the year. So, 2.59 for the first kilometre, as I said, which uh, Chirono has been asked to go out. But the problem here really is there's no pacemaker after that, so I guess it's whether Chep Koic does what she just keeps doing. She just cannot resist getting out there and running hard and... Kiang has taken advantage of that, beat her in the Kenyan trials, beat her again last week by letting Chet Koech burn herself out because even though her head might think she can still run in the well under nine minutes and her body's not quite up to it yet tonight, perhaps a little different as Chet Koech allows Kiang just to slot in behind the pacemaker, Yavi Coburn not too far away. Important race this, Steve, for the US champion Emma Coburn. She's looked uh, very, very competent this last uh, few weeks. A fabulous win at the US Championships and a pretty relaxed looking 909. And I think uh, Emma, who is frustrated at not yet having broken that nine minute barrier, we've got to remember that it is a, a very, very select group of athletes. What some five athletes ever have broken nine minutes. I think she's frustrated not to be a member of that club because her steeple chasing over what the last five, six years or more has been absolutely superb but she's gradually chipped away at her best times and maybe this will be her year but this is a big test yeah and i think you know you always have to, uh, to uh, admire corbin because she always gives herself the chance doesn't she and when she's in top shape she can stay with the pace occasionally she's going to drop off in the last 600 or so but she's always going to give herself the chance that's how she became a world champion Morty Frerichs, of course right up there with her at the time and silver medal two years ago but you're right the, the, it's a very competitive women's stupid chase we're looking at the minute Chet Koic not ever going to run 844 we don't think Kiang certainly capable of perhaps going under nine minutes can Coburn match that and then Krauser always just you're at the back there never going to trouble oh and there's a fall oh. and that may have been uh, Karui, I think, who, Purity Karui, excuse me, who was uh, leading the second group. I'll check on that in a second, but she's up on her feet. Lizzie Bird and Gregson uh, negotiating their way around that. But, yeah, I was about to say, well, they're well stretched out in this women's stupid chase, and why not? Because the pace has been good, it's been strong, and look at this, Kiang means business. She's now thinking, right, okay, I've taken over if you like as the woman to beat and it's not about Chep Koech how hard she can go it's can you stay with me 258 was very good pace making by Chirono just outside just inside 259 which was asked for and Kian keeping it going and as ever as we said Colburn will throw herself in there she'll commit she'll go with it she'll hang on as long as she can Chep Koech just sitting off it a little bit and Yavi these are the big four surely these four all will be thinking in Tokyo they've got a chance it's Kiang at the minute setting the pace. Steve, the early pace was fairly modest. It slowed in the second and third laps. And in fact, Krauser, who's quite a way down after the first 400 or 600, was able to close up on them. And then the pace is it's sort of seesawing at the front. It's speeded up again 
here we go into the second half of the race and Krauser's had to let them go. It's been a strange race with uh, what appears to be inconsistent laps. Yeah, I, I, I think it's more that Krauser really committed with these. I mean, a 258 first kilometer, you know, that's, that's 855 pace, so it's, you know, assuming you finish quick as well. So, you know, Kiang is keeping that going here. And I think just Krauser kind of went with it because she's run 9.9 recently, her third fastest ever, and thought, yeah, let's give it a go like Coburn does, see what happens. But what's happened is she can't keep going at this pace. I think it's just slowed a little now. Kiang, Coburn, Chepkoec, Yavi, four of them locked together. Coburn just, as ever, good technique through the water jump, just landing in front, but lets Kiang come round again. Well, she's been in this position many times, Coburn. 2017 world champion. She looks strong, looks confident. I don't think Kiang's really tested her yet. You're right, that first kilometre was super fast. It's just the pace has been inconsistent as Kiang goes to well this is set up nicely if they can uh, muster a bit of a finish here because they went through 2k right on six minutes six one for Colburn and look talking about mustering a finish Kiang's not gonna leave it to chance here she realized that the other three were sitting on her and Kiang having allowed them to bunch now wants to get it moving again but look at Colburn not letting her get away too easily and she knows Tim talked about she was so desperately wants to get under nine minutes. She's within range here, but she's got to finish strong and will have to have a big last lap if she's to get close to nine minutes. But Kiang striking out, still over 600 to go. Yeah, it's brave running from Kiang, isn't it? A little stutter at that barrier. She's feeling the pressure too, but she looks to be running almost with an urgency. She's desperate to get away from the others, not leave it to uh, make it a kicker's race. I like this sort of distance racing. I like the honesty of it. And Kiang water jump for the month but ultimate time skips over that one Coburn has been dragged clear of the others though if she can just maintain this tempo Coburn for the next 500 meters she's going to take some important scalps and she's running quick as well because at the front Kiang she was the Olympic silver medalist last time the bell rung at the right time this time sounds for her 745 or oh, stutters really badly there now, did she misjudge it? She slowed right down, Tim. I just wonder whether she misjudged the laps here completely, because that looked like to, an athlete sprinting to me and was disappointed to hear the bell. Surely she couldn't have got it that wrong. She's completely gone here, and Coburn senses it. 300 metres to go, the American chasing Kiang down. What, with all of the experience she has, how has she got this wrong? I know, I don't know, Steve. I don't think there was a bell wrong this time. Coburn went through the bell in exactly 7.50. She's got to cover this last lap in 70 seconds to get under nine minutes. Has she got the win in her sights here? Kiang rallying. It's very, very tough running this from the Kenyan. Kiang finds something. She's had to respond both mentally and physically. Oh, oh. Coburn falls just at the wrong time. She had that within her grasp and she can't pick it up. Well, drama everywhere in the steeplechase, both men and women's, and Coburn, when perhaps she had the chance to get close to nine minutes, has to watch as Kiang, for the second time, sprints for the line. Completely tired, completely spent, but she has enough to get over the line in 9-3. Chepkoets takes second ahead of Yavi, and Coburn finishes in around 9-8 after hitting the deck with full force in that water jump well what a couple of races we've seen there the bell rang on the wrong lap for the men Kiang misjudged it herself in the women's race unbelievable performance set to come back and win it though Steve I can hardly believe that shades of Evan Jager in the Paris Diamond League somewhat five six years ago when he fell at the final barrier when he had a sub eight minute performance in his sights and Coburn slaps the track there in frustration well she's normally so good Tim especially on the water jump you know and hurdling through just wonder whether I need to go back and just check whether she went off on the other leg just seemed to misjudge well did of course she misjudged it but you have to say that Kiang rallied in fine style and a 9-3 clocking when you've 
<laughs> when you've pretty much kicked hard within the penultimate lap and then found somebody right on your shoulder, they fall, and you've got to keep going. But the only thing for Coburn is she knows it's close, but you don't get too many opportunities, do you? you don't get too many. You don't, but if she's not injured, her pride is her, is frustrating, but Tokyo is still dangling. A national record for Lizzie Bird of Great Britain in seventh place. Lots of good times behind, but Kieng with a big win despite all the problems.